teaching us to sing God's praises and live more. They've done it gently. So far, we've been singing out of the hymnal all the time. I don't know. If it happens again, you may have us looking at the screen sometime in the future. And we'll figure it out. So, as we are there, other announcements about our life together this day. My friends, let us then now come together and prepare to worship God. Lift your hearts, raise your voice, and join the heavenly host who forever sings. Amen. Blessing and glory to you, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our hymn again. 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 Let's sing
song. The Lord is my shepherd. He is my Oh, God, you 
The gospel lesson for today is from the 10th chapter of John, beginning at the 22nd, continuing through the 30th verse. Listen now to the word of God. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I will give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, in regard to what he has given me, is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. For well, here we are on what in the common lectionary is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. It's always about the fourth Sunday after Easter, when one of the many passages of referring to Jesus as the Good Shepherd arises in the psalm. It's Psalm 23. But we need to face it. This image of the shepherd and the sheep is not all that familiar to most of us. I have a few memories. I went to sheep shearing events at a nearby church, uh, a neighboring church, the one I served in New Jersey. It was a fundraiser. There's a family who are members of Union Presbyterian in Monroe who have a small flock. And they have a land roast for the church every year. They roast the land, everyone else brings the side dishes and gathers around in their, on their land together. And I also remember one time when there had been a newborn lamb that had been born prematurely and the mother had died and they were nursing it so the lamb came to church. Perfect children's sermon that day. <laughs> Seeing sheep on the hillside of the Scottish borders as we wandered on a family trip to Melrose Abbey. And yes, that's the area of Scotland where my husband's family came from. It was a rather idyllic scene as we pondered the relationship between them and the River Tweed, the mills that operated in that area. In this country, sometimes we eat lamb, but it isn't a regular staple on most American tables not like it is in Australia or the British Isles. And not knowing any better, most of what we claim to know about sheep really is not very flattering. One is noted they're reputed in our kind of common understandings to be stupid, to lack an initiative and likely to fall over cliffs, which is why a shepherd's crook needs a bend or a hook. They also entangle themselves in brush. Sheep aren't playful. Lambs have a glimpse and charm about them, but the adult animal just seems stolid and maybe a little boring. Maybe variations in color, but most sheep resemble every other sheep in the flock. To see one sheep is to see them all. But as Margaret Gunther, reflecting on this passage, thinks of that description of sheep as it relates to God's people, she says, I'm not really pleased to be grouped with a bunch of sheep. And I suspect I'm not alone in this. Our society places a high value on ingenuity, creativity, individuality. It's better to be a leader than a follower. Can you imagine parents urging their children to be good sheep? We admire people with high energy levels and a zest for exploration. Well, a good sheep, whatever that is, is not part of the American dream. We don't hear about independent or self-made sheep. A sheep needs 
leaves the shepherd to guide and care for it and in dire straits to rescue it. There's nothing sentimental in this relationship. For the sheep, it's a matter of survival. And for the shepherd, a matter of economy. The sheep are valuable property. Although all sheep look alike to those of us who are city and town bred, the good shepherd knows his sheep as individuals. Each one is worthy of her care and attention. In Luke's gospel, Jesus is trying to give his hearer some idea of God's love for the seeming insignificant individuals. He tells that story, the parable, you know, of the shepherd who leaves the flock to search for the one troublesome stray. For all we know, it's a scruffy sheep, it's the runt of the flock, but the shepherd rejoices as he carries it home. Margaret has also noted we easily turn people into sheep, those people who look alike and we don't see as individuals. The homeless who warm themselves on sidewalk grapes as we're going into the overture center. The frail aged lining up in their wheelchairs in nursing home corridors. The caged in jails and prisons. They all become like sheep. For the individual, even the individual child with great pleading eyes begins to look like every other starving children whose sixth child whose picture we see. We turn people into sheep because it's easier that way. It shields us from being touched by their pain. It helps us to deny kinship with them. It helps us forget that we're sheep too. To think I'm not a sheep would be to miss out actually on something quite good. As sheep, we're given the ability to hear to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd who knows the sheep. And perhaps that's the greatest benefit of being sheep, to be known by and to follow the Good Shepherd, is to be able to hear and recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd. Recognizing voices helps us to feel secure. The late Dr. Barry Brazelton was a Harvard professor of pediatric medicine, and he wrote a lot of scholarly books, but he wrote one book in particular that guided many a baby boomer parent like me in caring for our infants. He also produced a video which illustrated the way that very young infants become aware of their parents and can recognize their parents by the sound of their voice. He took an infant in his arms in this video and asked us to watch the infant's eyes. He spoke to the baby. No reaction. He asked other people behind the screen to speak. Little recognition from the baby. But then the mother of the baby also behind the screen spoke and the baby's eyes visibly widened. The infant turned toward the sound of the mother's voice. It was obvious that the child knew her mother's voice in distinction from all other voices, almost as if she was saying, this is the one to whom I belong. We may think we prefer to be individuals and not one of the flock, but we also know that deep down, more than anything else, we want to belong. We want to be known by the one who loves us. Sometimes we may fear it and aren't so certain, but deep down, that's what we want. And sometimes we'll let ourselves be known in bits and pieces and learn to know others in the same way. My husband of some 48 years thinks he knows me. We got amused at the Mother's Day card I opened up today where he goes through all the various kinds of things that he is. And the inside one, I'm also the store who sleeps next to you. You know he never admits to store, it's knowing any other kind, just in the Mother's Day card. May we do know each other. I think I know him. 
maybe the truth is revealed in the Father's Day card. Our children think they have us figured out. And perhaps foolishly, I think I know myself pretty well. But I choose to be known on my own terms. And it's usually trying to be a fairly constructive and edited version of myself. I'm not going to be one of those sheep that gets lost and falls over a cliff. I can find my own way, thank you very much. But to be fully known in our human relationships is otherwise. It's the foundation of our relationship with Christ, to be fully known. And to be fully known does have its painful moments, as well as being profoundly comforting. As we accept the humble status of sheep, we let our mask and defenses drop away and allow the shepherd to carry us on his shoulder and occasionally poke us with his staff. Sometimes we're thwarted. The edge of the cliff doesn't look too dangerous. I wasn't going to wander that far. But we can listen for the shepherd's voice and rejoice that he knows each of us, even as we may blunder alone. And because we can listen, we find we can believe. This passage can be read as one that raises all kinds of questions about who is in and who is out and a member of the flock, who's among the elect or otherwise. There are those who hear and recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd, and there are those who can't. Clearly, those who were questioning Jesus were not among them, but the main point is not who's in and who's out but that by God's grace, we've been given that ability to recognize, to believe, to follow. It's not our doing. It comes from God. And that really is the mystery of divine election. What's interesting is that Jesus doesn't seem to worry a whole lot about exactly what we believe. Jesus is focused on having us listen and follow that we are the sheep of his pasture. And for us, perhaps it's more about the comfort and security we find in being able to follow, not always having to be up front and ahead. William Willimon tells about the time a couple that he was working with before their marriage asked him to preach on the 23rd Psalm for their wedding. He told them, as beloved as that psalm is, in all of his ministry, he had never preached on the 23rd Psalm at a wedding. Yes, at funerals. It's read at funerals the way we normally read 1 Corinthians 13 at weddings, the love chapter. But the bride told the woman, we put a lot of prayer and thought into this. We're anxious. We're worried. And who can blame us? Our parents are divorced. Many of our friends are having trouble in their marriages. It's kind of frightening for us just starting out. Marriage isn't easy these days. And then, then he understood why they selected Psalm 23. We're anxious, the bride said. What better cure for our anxiety than an affirmation that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, who loves us, who knows us, and shall keep us even, even in the valley of the shadow of death or whatever daunting situation we find ourselves in. Psalm 23 spends nearly all of its time speaking about the character of the shepherd rather than the nature of the sheep. The action is placed upon the shoulders of the shepherd. The shepherd is the one who keeps, who leads, who makes the sheep to lie down in green pastures, the one who restores and protects. In our American popular religion, we may be putting a bit too much emphasis on what we're to think and believe not as much on what God in Christ does. Psalm 23 asserts that the sheep are in relationship with the shepherd on the basis of what the shepherd does, rather than on the basis of what the sheep do. And in that is great assurance. 
We gather here in church and we feel a kind of conviction and assurance growing with us. But we know in just a few minutes we'll wander out of here into the world away from the fold and it's more difficult. Our anxiety kicks in. Many voices are competing for our attention. Paths go in a myriad of directions and some are close to cliffs and some go right into bramble bushes. But what seems sure and certain begins to fade. And then we remember we have heard the voice, the voice of Jesus and he knows us and he gathers us into his flock each and every one of us. In some ways, it's kind of like the story of a census taker who called on an apartment in a crowded tenement in Detroit. A woman holding a baby came to the door and five other children huddled around her clinging to her skirt. And the census taker started his list of questions and soon he came to, how many children do you have? And the woman answered carefully, well, there's Debbie Sue, there's Jimmy, there's Tracy Lynn, there's Beth Ann, there, just, he cut her off impatiently. Forget the names, lady, just give me the number. The woman eyes blazed as she answered indignantly, in this house, children are not numbers. They have names. The Good Shepherd, one who knows our name. And we come to know his and who he is for this day and for tomorrow. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let's sing a version of Psalm 23 in number 802, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. <laughs> Searching and worried, 
who touches us through song and silence, word and gesture, who calls us by name to enter the dance of love. We believe in the spirit, the hidden presence behind every resurrection, who beckons us to lead to light safety and trust the gracious invitation to live joyfully. We believe the Spirit is always renewing the church and making us a people who practice kindness, encourage beauty, and work for justice and freedom. We believe we are an Easter people, a sign that with God all things are possible. Amen. And you may be seated. My friends, let us come before God in prayer. Blessing and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, and honor, power, and might are to you, our God, forever and ever. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, as the scent of lilies is in our memory and the flowery cross is not yet a distant memory, hold your resurrection glory before us as our guide and our hope. May this season plant seeds of new life and yield growth and maturity in Christ. May the presence of your spirit be our steady hope and faithful friend. For mothers around the world today, we give you thanks, O oh God. We give thanks for the countless way mothers and mother figures nurture, for parent figures who educate and inspire. Bless those who hold and heal who shelter and protect, who free themselves and others from that which discourages and curbs human potential. Within our very roles and with our differing gifts, let us find the fulfillment of our humanity. And tender God, we pray for those for whom this day is hard, for those who have lost children and those who have lost mothers. For those who have longed to be mothers and have not been able. For those whose relationships as mother and child are fractured. Help us not to be cavalier in our assumptions about one another, but open our hearts to those in pain in ways known and unknown. Righteous God in a world torn by war, torn by society that forces to choose one side or the other. Keep us from hate that hardens. Keep us from scorekeeping with human lives. When our world is troubled and violence is the chosen path, be near to judge and to save us. May our leaders be led by your wisdom. May humility be our companion and friend. May our hearts be moved by just love and by loving justice. We pray for those who are ill and dying, for those grieving, those recovering, asking healing God for your presence, that all may know the peace that passes all understanding whether in this life or in the life to come. These things we pray, Almighty God, as a gathered body of Christ, praying as we have been taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As God gave us Christ, the first fruit of creation, let us humbly offer the substance of our lives in thanksgiving to our God. Eternal God, 
that you can introduce these gifts through your purpose and the world. Give me food to the hungry, hope to the stern, and a new life to the dead. Teach us to live each day for you, so that future generations will know your goodness and praise your glory. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the second song, O God, you are my God, step by step. Hymn number 743. Jesus Christ be with us all. Hallelujah and Amen. Amen. 